Kummer and Ray reject the compromise, avoiding a contempt charge from the Oversight Committee. The FBI will deliver the subpoenaed document at the center of the controversy to the House on Monday, according to a deal negotiated by FBI Director Chris Ray and Committee Chairman James Kummer, R. K. Y., in the face of an impending contempt citation from the House Oversight Committee. Kummer and Jamie Raskin, the committee's ranking member, will analyze it there and take in an associated briefing from the agency. The document in question is an informant report that claims current President Joseph Biden participated in a bribery scheme involving unnamed foreign entities while he was vice president, as Rich and I discussed this week on the show. Kummer recently asserted that the foreign nation concerned is not China and was not a subject of the committee's earlier Biden family probe, which was covered in this NR editorial. The report was documented using the FBI's standard FD-1023 form, which is designed to document statements from confidential human sources, CHSs, or those who supply information to the agency as opposed to other methods of acquiring intelligence, such as electronic surveillance. Overall, Kummer won because he resisted FBI resistance and kept to his principles. However, the agreement reached to avoid the danger of contempt is a compromise rather than a total administrative capitulation. That is how it ought to be. Director Ray originally rejected any disclosure in contempt of the demand. He even refused to acknowledge the existence of the paper, to which Kummer and Senator Chuck Grassley, R. Iowa, who has extensively researched the influence peddling activities of the Biden family, had been notified by whistleblower investigators. Ray reluctantly admitted the document's existence after more than three weeks, but he countered that the FBI would only provide a version of it that had been heavily blacked. Additionally, he made an effort to mandate that committee members visit FBI headquarters to review only the materials that the FBI was willing to let them view, under the Bureau's supervision. According to what I've said this week, see here and here, the FBI lacks a solid legal justification for withholding the material Congress is requesting. Politically, Kummer knew that Ray, who runs a law enforcement agency that depends on subpoena compliance, was eager to avoid being held in contempt for improperly disobeying a subpoena. Legally, Kummer knew he possessed the upper hand. As a result, the chairman warned the director that only presenting the document to the entire committee would be considered adequate compliance. But in the end, Kummer wisely took a small step back. Kummer and Raskin will be the only members of the committee to see the document and receive a briefing in a secure Capitol Hill room that is typically used to analyze sensitive intelligence, the FD-1023 in question is not classified, at least for the time being. This provides Ray a chance to acknowledge the FBI's concerns while also giving the committee what it needs for the sake of its important probe. Those are valid issues. If the FBI was unable to guarantee the confidentiality of informants, it would severely hinder the government's capacity to gather data and intelligence for use in law enforcement and national security. Ray was informed by Kummer and Speaker Kevin McCarthy, R., California, that the House's goal was to collect the material, not jeopardize the FBI's mission. However, they were adamant in stating that the FBI's concerns should be weighed against other important considerations, such as Congress's ability to check the abuse of executive power and make sure the FBI is not using the mantra sources and methods as a smokescreen to hide misconduct or incompetence. Everyone's interests should be met by the agreement reached. This exemplifies the reason why courts shouldn't get involved in conflicts between the political branches and their conflicting but legitimate objectives. Although a lot of furniture can be damaged during a heated argument, reasonable concessions are usually reached. This occurs when it is evident that, a, under the terms of our Constitution, one side, in this case, Congress, gets to make the decisions and, b, that side respects the genuine concerns of the other side, in this case, the agency. There was more drama than was necessary in this situation, but if it had been stuck in court, it would have taken months to resolve. The main takeaway from this episode is that the FBI needs to accept the reputational harm it has incurred as a result of eight years of politicization and subpar performance. 
the public is not as convinced as it once was that the FBI is an impartial, law-abiding institution, thus the Bureau is simply not as formidable as it once was in conflicts with Congress. The motto of the Bureau's sources and methods will no longer do for lawmakers, who are answerable to the general public. Law enforcement informants did not merely refer Kummer and Grassley to the relevant paper. The investigators have claimed that their chains of command, which ultimately connect to the Biden Justice Department, have prevented them from taking the basic investigative measures they would take in a typical case since the politically influential Biden family is at the core of this investigation. Kummer and Grassley claim that the FD-1023 form that was subpoenaed discusses an alleged illegal plot that involved then-Vice President Biden and a foreign person and involved the exchange of money for the making of policy choices. The document allegedly contains a detailed account of the suspected illegal scheme's methods and objectives, according to whistleblower agents. Kummer has requested more than just access to the file. The committee is also interested in learning what the FBI did to look into the claims. This is a crucial inquiry, particularly in light of alarming signs that, prior to the 2020 election, top bureau officials worked with congressional Democrats to discredit the Biden corruption narrative as Russian disinformation and took steps to halt investigation leads. To reiterate what I previously said. A Senate Republican investigation into the scandal that the media Democrat complex continues to bury, the cashing in on Joe Biden's political influence by his family members, with his knowing and willful involvement, was already underway three months before the New York Post reported on the Hunter Biden laptop. This scandal involved millions of dollars flowing into the Biden family coffers from agents of corrupt and authoritarian reg. Congressmen Democrats turned to some of their numerous allies in the FBI brass, evidently concerned about the potential impact of these allegations on their party's presidential choice. These included Brian Auten, an intelligence analyst who was crucial in the incredibly deceptive FISA warrant applications the FBI submitted in federal court, leading the judges to believe the 2016 Trump campaign had conspired with the Kremlin, and Timothy Thibault who oversaw the Bureau's Washington field office until he was forced into early retirement over anti-Republican, anti-conservative posts on his social media account. The FBI assisted Democrats in spreading a political narrative that the evidence of foreign money lining the Biden's pockets was Russian disinformation through the use of these officials, despite the fact that much of this evidence consisted of simple, easily verifiable money trail records produced by financial institutions. The Oversight Committee's demand for the document claiming Biden's involvement in a bribery scheme will be honored by the FBI on Monday. In response, Chairman Kummer has decided against holding Ray in contempt of Congress, at least for the time being. Nevertheless, this story's beginning is still closer to us than its conclusion. The document's production is commendable, but the FBI has to provide greater justification.